Hi, y'all. I'm Tim Taylor. I was spending time with the Lord this morning, and there's something that I saw that I've never seen before that I want to share with you today about the reset. Now, right now, I'm sure by now you've heard about the Great Reset either on the news, newspaper, websites, whatever. But here's a few examples. Uh, the Palm Beach Post talks about the Biden presidency, turns of, signals of turn to globalism. And in that, he mentions here about how Biden's climate czar, John Kerry, is a staunch advocate for the Great Reset uh, and has already said that he will lobby for America's involvement in the Great Reset. And the thing that I want to emphasize here, the climate czar, the whole thing about climate change, everything like that, which used to be called global uh, freezing then global warming and all that kind of stuff and they had to change it to climate change because the kept warming up and then it would cool down and warm up cool down almost sounds like winter spring summer and fall <laughs> i won't go down that road we also have leaders like Justin Trudeau talking about the Great Reset causing a big uh, conflab because he brought up the term Great Reset. And the context was in the term of the pandemic. We have here uh, this gentleman here who is the uh, spoke at the World Economic Forum in 2014 and said, oh, excuse me, he spoke recently and said, the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect and reimagine and reset our world. And there we have not only climate change being used, but also the pandemic being used as a time for a global reset, just like John Kerry. They were discussing at Davos, which was the World Economic Forum was held. And anyway, the point is the term great reset has been making its round a lot i want you to remember that term reset because i'm going to show you something out of the scripture in just a moment but before i get there let me refer you to also rick joiner i listened to him this morning as i was working out and uh, in his youtube that just came out uh, yesterday he talked about getting engaged and in this uh, uh, uh youtube he <clears throat> talks about what god showed him in 1987 also in 2014 uh, and it had to do where he saw there, there would be a time where the United States would go real far left, but it would cause him to come back to the right. 2014, it also said that uh, the Lord told him that patriotism would win. Um, and so there's a battle coming. He thought it was going to be many, many years, years in the future. And he also talked about another prophet, Seer, uh, Bob Jones, and conversations they had together. And Bob Jones had told him on more than one occasion that... Um, whenever um, uh, that the second American Revolution would occur, the thing that would spark the second American Revolution would be the same thing that sparked the first one. And he said that's when they came after their guns. And what Rick was noting was Biden just made an announcement here in the last week where they're coming after the guns. And so my encouragement to you guys is we need to be prepared. In my ministry, uh, since we've ever since Brenda and I have been called into the ministry. We were called first as watchmen. And uh, ever since that time, our vision, our assignment was always summed up in this one statement. Our job was to declare and prepare. And so we've always, all through our life, no matter what the ministry expression, it kind of focused follow that pattern. We declare, we proclaim what we see coming, and then we also help people prepare to engage. And so <clears throat> I wanted to share with you what the Lord showed me this morning. Um, and so I was reading in Psalm 9, 4, uh, 15, and it says this, the nations have sunk down into a pit, which they made in the net, which they hid their own foot is caught. The nations have sunk down into the pit, which they made in the net, which they hid their own foot is caught. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. I want you to pay attention to that word net. Remember reset. Look at this scripture over here in Ezekiel 17. It says this. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, as I live, surely my oath which he despised and my covenant which he broke, I will recompense on his own head. I will spread my net over him, and he shall be taken in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon and try him there for the trees in which he committed against me. Look what this term means, net. The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made, and the net which they hid, their own foot is caught. What does that say right there? What does that look like? 
looks like reset. Now, this is Hebrew. I always marvel at what God does and how he hides things. He says, it's the glory of God to conceal a manner, but it's the honor of kings to search it out. I love the search of the word of God. And I found this, and look what this means. It's a net for catching of judgment of leaders leading people to sin. A trap for men, a network. And my friends, the nations have sunk down in the pit which they made, in the net which they hid for the, uh, the hid, their own foot is caught. The reset, in the reset, which they hid, their own foot is caught. <laughs> I submit to you that we ought to be praying about this great reset. The scripture gives us insight. It says there, it talks about the net which they've hid. I want you to encourage you to go to Psalm 35. And we can pray and proclaim this. Plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler. Stand up for my help. Draw up the spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let them be brought to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like chaff before the wind. Let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let them be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For without a cause, they've hidden a net for me in the pit, which they have dug without a cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpectedly. And in that net he is hid, uh, that he has hidden, catch himself. And into that very destruction let him fall that my friends is what we can pray and my soul shall be joyful in the lord and it shall rejoice in his salvation now there are some out there who say christians you ought not to be involved in politics or in well, let me submit something to you politics you won't find the term politics in scripture but what you will find is government politics is man's making and the thing is the reason our politics are so corrupt is because the christians abandon their post and it's a time to return to that. The reason there is no justice is because those who love truth have departed. That's why we have a party that can steal an election so overtly. This is why we can have so much of a double standard in those scales of justice being administered in our nation over the last few decades. It's a time for the real church to arise, to proclaim truth, because unless there is real truth, there is no true mercy. Uh, and, there, uh, and, and the Bible says righteousness and justice is the foundation of God's throne. My friends, it is not right for someone to steal an election. I would submit to you, President Biden is not the president at all. I refer to him as the president and thief. There, he is sitting in the office, but that does not mean it is his because another one won the election. And it, there is the proof that is out there that the sad thing is it's revealed the corruption in our judicial system and our justice system because the reason they haven't seen the evidence is because no one would hear the evidence. Why? Because we have so much people that are being compromised or being extorted. So we need to pray and proclaim this word right here because I'm telling you right now, there is a contradiction going on. It's a time for us to uh, lend our lips to the Lord. It says, the Lord gave the word, Psalm 1611, great was the company, those who proclaimed it. It says, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh when he, they shall say, let us cast off his restraint in Psalm chapter two. But God's going to rule out of his Mount Zion with a rod of iron. And that word translated rod is five times more frequently translated tribe. There's a people that will lend their lips to the word of the Lord to become the word of the Lord on earth as it is in heaven to release it, to effect God's will on earth. It says in Psalm 50, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 55, 11, it says, my word is not returned void, but it goes forth to accomplish all that I sent it to do. And my friends right now is a time for the remnant to rise up and lend their lips to the word of the Lord that we might proclaim his word on earth as it is in heaven, that we might see his will done on earth as it is in heaven. I am expecting this great reset that the adversary has set to snare themselves. And I submit to you, it is a time for you to rise up and be involved like David's mighty men taking your stand in the middle of the field and not retreating. It is not a time to retreat. It is not a time to be so fearful. It is a time. It says, Perfect love cast out all fear. Perfect love is Jesus Christ. It says God is love, but God is also a consuming fire. And the zeal for his house has eaten me up, and I pray and hope it eats you up too. I encourage you, do not be fearful. But at the same time, be wise. You need to be wise and prepare. We are in for some rough times here in the very near future, but I submit to you, we need to pray and proclaim that, it would, that uh, as my friend Al Houghton says, we need to pray 
for the judgment of the least amount of judgment to be rendered that would yield the maximum amount of salvation. We need to pray for truth and just to be manifested so that the, the oppressed can experience the mercy of God. Because right now there are people that are being unjustly oppressed. There are children that are being murdered by this administration. There is a uh, abuse of the First Amendment such that right now uh, freedom of speech has been so trampled on they are emboldened and now are going after the Second Amendment now that nobody's paying attention to the First Amendment. And that's part of what's going on. They are robbing you of your freedoms. The Great Reset was to reset the world to be under the global domination of the left. That, my friends, has been the plan for a long time. And that's their, their newest expression of it. It's a time for the church to rise up and to pray. And what's the real issue? I submit to you the real issue is for us to steward well the freedoms that we have, that we might proclaim truth for the sake of a harvest. And my friends, that's what this is all about. It's about a harvest of souls to make disciples so that our Lord can receive sheep nations. It's people that are discipled, mentored unto the Lord and his standard. I pray that our, I, I trust that our finest days are in, uh, in the future. Uh, I'm really excited about this time. I encourage you, do not be fearful. Do not be cowardly, but prepare yourself with the word of the Lord and prepare yourself practical. Pray and obey. I pray the Lord bless you and keep you in this coming time. I also pray that you stand well and that heaven would record how well you stood at this time. Bless you all.